I like my fish and pork. I'm a big boy. If you call a little me salmon and shallot, really good. Squid and chicken do out. Don't forget the loud loud. And breakfast with bar. Pacho Man! It is Aloha Friday. We've had an amazing week. And what a great way to finish up. Our last two guests will be Ferris El Sultan and then Marinda Carfrey. We are brought to you by ES Myoplex, Polar, Hoka, One One, Velo Fix, Norma Tech. Our championship edition will be held at Four Seasons, Hualalai, Aero, Power Breather. How you doing? Ferris El Sultan, the 2005 Ironman World Champion. Please give it up. Does that ever get old? No. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> when did you get into this craziness? Did you grow up more swimming than anything else? Uh, no, all kinds of sports, nothing really competitive, but just about everything. Of course, like every other German boy, soccer and uh, a little bit of judo, swimming, and just about everything. And when did you find triathlon? Um, I started then competitive swimming, but it was quite obvious that uh, I'm way too late and won't be a good swimmer. Then uh, I ran a bit, ran a marathon when I was 16, and then I saw TV coverage of uh, Ironman Hawaii and Thomas Hellriegel. And uh, when I saw that, uh, I mean, that was it. So this is what I got to do. And uh, then I did a little triathlon when I was 18, short course. Yes. And the second triathlon was Ironman Lanzarote. So the second one ever. So you didn't. It's not like you did a lot of sprint distance, Olympic distance. You did a a, a short race and then go to the big time. Yeah. Go yeah. big or go home. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And how'd you do in that race? Well, I was very disappointed at the uh, at my first race, but uh, it was a ten thirty three. Um, for yeah, the that's pretty for bad the, for, for the first experts. time ever. Yeah. Um, who know the Lanzarote course? Uh, it's, it's brutal. It's a tough race, and back in the day, um, the island wasn't paved properly, yes. so it was more like a mountain bike race uh, on uh, time trial bikes. Nice. And then, as, so at that point, were you able after getting a 10:33 there? Were you sponsored, or are you supporting yourself, or how are you getting by? Uh, no, 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 no. Um, I was still then first in school. Then uh, um, I did uh, mandatory service uh, in the military, yes. and then I started studying, and my parents supported me. So uh, I, I never worked a real job. Good man, me either. <laughs> That's sort of nice, huh? <laughs> we don't want to ever stop. Or no. Why would I, we want I, a real I, job? I, it's a waste I really of time. can't complain. I can't yes. complain. No, no, we get to hang out here. This is pretty sweet. So when did you have a race where you felt like, you know what, I could be really good at this? Well, it was... You know, often you get asked, when, when did you turn pro? And uh, it's, it's not like you sign a contract and then you are pro, but it's more like a smooth transition. You know, first yes. you do Bundesliga races, you get some appearance f money from your, from your teams, then you make a little prize money. So it's a smooth transition. But um, I finally decided to be full-time pro in 2004 when I was already uh, second place in Roth and uh, seventh place here in Kona. And then I knew, okay, this is, uh, I'm, I'm not here by accident, but uh, I can do something. And then at that point, after you had been here and had some success, did you like this place? Was it something that, that either people come here and they're intimidated by it, or they come here and they fall in love? Well, I fell in love right away. And I mean, this is the race of the races. And uh, I like just about everything uh, about it. You know, the, the, I like the, the climate. I like the island. And uh, I, w I would love it here even if there was no Ironman or nothing. And I know that there are other triathletes that just never, never seem to get around it and never had good races here, no matter how well they performed uh, somewhere else. But, but uh, you know, I uh, walk off the plane and start smiling. And 2005, talking about smiling, that was one of those days where you just, you had this great race. And I remember uh, you, you, you talked about chasing the helicopter, right? Meanwhile, the helicopter was chasing you, by the way. <laughs> you weren't chasing the helicopter. They were following you. They weren't just out there. What was it about that day that was just so magical? Well, I don't really know. I mean, I obviously was uh, in two, f two, or f four, two, or five, and two, six. I was uh, three. I had three good years and was in in really good shape. Um, so that was one thing. But you know, to to really to win it um, is something you cannot really plan on. And you and you can 
you can do everything and be physically prepared and be mentally prepared but you know you can there's only so much you can control and on that day i i just went for it and uh, i r i never thought I, or till very late in the race i thought that uh, i might be caught because sure I mean, Peter Reed was chasing me, the most successful guy on 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 uh, right. Ironman Hawaii, <coughs> and uh, and I had two and a half minutes at at one point, and I thought, yeah, well, uh, okay, he's going to to catch me, but uh, I thought I'll make it as bloody hard as I can for them. <laughs> Just keep going hard. <laughs> yeah, and it worked out. And you were sporting the speedo, which is very important. Yeah, yeah, I, I know that it's very important. For me, it was never something so special about it because, you know, I, I grew up with it and everybody was wearing Speedos because there was nothing else uh, at first. Right. And then I just kept going with it. And um, nowadays, unfortunately, it is, it is impossible because the Speedo and the, and the triathlon top are just uh, too slow on the bike. <laughs> you you got to wear one of those suits. How has it changed? How has the sport changed since you first... We're, we're racing at the top level to now, do you think? Well, um, I mean, it has become... If you look at the times, for example, the, the top guy is still about in the same range that right. it used to be in the last 20 years. A little bit faster on the bike, maybe, because due to those uh, suits, for example, and to more aerodynamic stuff. But basically, I, I can only quote uh, P. Jacobs, uh, who said after his victory, I didn't do anything special. I just uh, did what you have to do to win this race. And so that is quite the same. But behind the first guy there are more guys that are good for top 10 in former days there were maybe 20 now there's 40 guys that can be top top 10. how did it change your life winning this race oh of course it changed it uh, i mean more attention uh, of course more money more sponsorship the sport itself grew and uh, i mean if i look around here now uh, it's just incredible i mean we had live tv coverage from the nation's parade are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, I mean, German TV was broadcasting from the Edinger evening. You know, they did an interview with Patrick there live. Yes. I, it, it, it doesn't get better than that. So, Patrick Lange, when did you first see him and realize that he was a talent? <laughs> We, we were in a training camp and he was more or less training by himself and uh, I was with the PIVAC team back at that time and uh, so he started hanging around with us and, um, and we started to, to train a bit together and, uh, and I said when I retire I'm, I'm going to coach and, uh, and I coach you and, uh, and you know we, we kind of clicked and, um, and so when I finally retired in 2015 um, late in the season um, we decided uh, to give it a try and uh, I told him right in the beginning, you know what, Patrick, you are not a talent and you will never ever win a big race, you know. And <laughs> <coughs> That's the type of coach everybody should have. <laughs> Might as well just give it up now. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I mean, seriously, when, when I first, uh, w what I saw was a guy that obviously can run, his running performance is really well, but he has never done an Ironman before, uh, no long running, nothing, so uh, I thought, okay, he's good at that, but uh, I don't know how fast he actually can go, and his biking was mm, mediocre, and his swim was okay, but f we, we just did a few little things and he already started improving and i mean then he had that great first first race Ironman texas is that and it? first ironman it's a it's a it's a continental championship and he wins it and we're like whoa how did that go and uh, and then he came here and uh, his second ironman first full really full ironman because the the race was shortened in texas uh due to due to flooding problems yeah, yeah. and and he becomes third place i mean it can't get any better than that. And, and 239 marathon. Yeah, that, that was, that, I mean, I watched it back from back home and, and saw it on the, uh, on, in the, the live stream. And yes. I was like, okay, well, he's 23rd. Yeah, he'll, he'll run into the top 15. I was sure. And then all of a sudden up on Polani, you see the splits and he's like, he's going faster than Frodeno and Keelan. And you're like, oh, that looks promising. <laughs> and, uh, and then, you know, I mean, we were glued to the screen and, and, and you know, anxiously waiting for the next split to come up. Um, and then he, he was overtaken and overtaken. And, uh, and I think, you know, everybody um, 
uh, everybody th when he thinks of Patrick's run thinks of uh, of his crossing the finish line because right. he was he was just so taken emotionally but i think that the the, f the funniest picture is when he overtakes andy becherer and andy becherer is giving him that look like what, what? you Wh where'd you come from <laughs> you were so far back how did you catch me and 239 <laughs> did you ever imagine he could run 239 off the bike here in kona no no um I, well as i said i knew that that guy can run fast um i i was quite sure that he can run do 248 um and you know, maybe 245, but 239, I mean, he was on fire, and he just was flashed. So how do you follow up on that? We've seen a lot of people have great runs off the bike and run their way up to third, fourth, second, and then, you know, the following year, they don't have a great race. Yeah, well, I told him right after the race, you know, probably you never have a run like that again. That's the bad news. <laughs> good, good news is... If you don't get a time penalty, you don't have to run that fast. We take 242, 243, and you win it. <laughs> exactly, right? So, um, you know, you, you can't expect him to, to have that kind of a run every year. That's just downright impossible. Um, but I think we can expect a solid run, a really solid run, and uh, something, you know, that is going to mix up the race. Sure. Have you, has he been working on swim and bike this year more? Well, his swimming actually isn't that bad, and he he was uh, had a good swim at uh, at Arm in Frankfurt. Uh, yes, he was injured in the at the beginning of the season, which was uh, quite a bummer because it took for ages, and there were several multiple things coming together, and oh, it took us a while to figure it out and get rid of everything. And at at Frankfurt, you know, he wasn't well prepared. He had uh, he did had a tactical misjudgment and then of course he got sabotaged by his coach and uh, got another one minute time penalty because What'd you do? I, I i ran beside him <laughs> and <laughs> to tell him that he shouldn't be in the race and um, he should run slower or what? Yeah, yeah some other <laughs> encouraging words <laughs> you know actually that was the first race that i was on site with him yeah. and i got carried away emotionally a bit and uh, you know if somebody would have um, if somebody would have asked me i would have said you know i ran only five meters with him Unfortunately, later on, when I saw it on TV, it was more than five meters. It was more like a <laughs> hundred. <laughs> so it was, I mean, we deserved it. And uh, I apologized a trillion times for it. And you shouldn't be sabotaged by your own crew. Um, yeah, but uh, it happened and it costed him, thank God, only the fifth place. Uh, and yeah, so. Uh. So what would you be happy with here after taking, you know, after being on the podium last year? Obviously, the next step is winning the race. Well, if we ha wouldn't have had the the spring issue with the, the, all those weeks of not training and uh, going back and forth and uh, therapy here, therapy there, um, then he might have been more ready, more you know. There's just more consistency. Mm -hmm. Now he could w he he could win the race if it everything goes his way but if something occurs then he's out of it and i i'm really i would be really happy if if he has a solid performance and he's able to push through and uh, you know if he doesn't have that flashed feeling and uh, and just perform solidly and if that is a sixth place i'd be very happy with it um top 10 of course that's sure. what you're always aiming for and um that this is what what I would be happy with, and uh, if we have more solid uh, built up, then uh, maybe for next year, then you know, a win, a win. When did you know it was time to hang it up as an athlete? I think it was Ironman Texas. Was it Ironman Texas where in fifteen ish something like that? Yeah, I mean, it was in two thousand fourteen. My racing wasn't already that good anymore, and I and the little niggles here, little niggles there, and uh, I knew that either. I have to do it like Frodo does. You know, you have your own physiotherapist that is taking care of you every day, uh, or I can't do the the volume and training that is necessary and the intensity. And uh, it comes to a point where it's like, phew, I I don't I don't want to do it. I don't want to invest that much anymore. And um, and then you know, kids and so honestly, I don't know how the guys 
that have kids in the peak of their career do it because uh, I, for me, it was uh, something that you know distracted me sure. so much. And uh, the distracted sounds negative, but of course, it's a positive thing. And so I, it all came together, and I knew I, I got to let go. One of my favorite Ferris stories when we brought you out for endurance awards after you won Ironman to San Diego, and I go to pick you up at the airport. And there's your bike box, cardboard box, right? And I'm like, where's your luggage? He goes, oh, no, my clothes are in the bike box. <laughs> Everything was in the box. I love that. You're, you're, I, I you're travel a minimalist. Light. I travel light. Yes. Do you look at that 2005 win? Was that? I know it's the most important in terms of your career. Do you look at that as your best race? Well, I think that I have had other performances that were probably even better uh, in 2004, I won arm, half Ironman St. Croix, and there I had a beat Croy, um, and I had a really, really good bike ride back then. And also, uh, my s third place in 2006, uh, that was really, really hardly uh, worked for. Yes. And uh, so, uh, th I'm probably more proud of the third place in 2006 than I'm uh, of the win in 2005 because in 2005 I, r I was riding the wave and every everything I was just you know coming up and everything went my way and and everything was all right and in 2006 I, I really had to work for it perfect how about a round of applause for Mr. Ferris also Tan thank you so much for taking time Ferris is the best. Pancho man, take us out, my man. Squid and chicken luau, don't forget the lao lao and walk. It's breakfast with Bob. And Pancho Man! Wow!